guys, Steven here with another episode in the display tutorial, which I hope some of you at least are still following and not getting tired of. This one is going to apply to everyone though, so you may want to pay attention. Uh, I'm going to give a brief overview of what we've done so far. I'm flying in the air right now. Uh, we have the inputs right here. Uh, teal is A and pink is B. And these are ours nor latches, which hold the values until we're done using them for our equations. So if you push a button, this will hold the value until we're finished. Uh, these orange things in the B inputs are X nor gates, which allow us to perform subtraction. The pink and blue alternating things are uh, full adders, which add the two numbers together and provide us our answer. The blue and green things here are binary to seven segment decoders and there are four of them which you can't quite distinguish here except that every four lines a new one begins uh past that i have the hookups to the seven second display this is just kind of an ad hoc thing that i threw together there's no science to it except that you have to reroute these lines into those lines and eventually i'm going to cover this up to make it pretty all this will be submerged underground ideally and i use vertical transmission to get our signal up there so, today I want to show you how to give a power switch to your setup so that you can take a uh, display like this one, which it displays zero if you don't have any inputs going into it, which is accurate. We, we have no inputs going into it, but this bothers me because we're not looking for an answer right now, so I don't want to know that it's zero. So, by flicking the power switch, we can actually turn the display off totally, and it doesn't, it doesn't change what's going on inside the engine here. We're just turning off our display. So we could actually do all of our calculations and then turn on the display to see the answer if we wanted to. Now, the calculations are going to go very quickly through the system, so that's not necessary. And you can see the power switch is also very fast. So really, it's what you want to do. So the simplest way to do this that I have found is not really that simple, but it's also not complicated. It just kind of, it is what it is. It's annoying. What you have to do is to prevent these torches from getting power you have to and using meaning using an and gate which many of you from, are familiar with uh you simply take three blocks like this we put uh oh, come on now lagging a little bit here put two torches on top one in the front with wire in between and then we have our two inputs whoops like this so this is input A, this is input B, and this is the output. The output is only true if both of these guys are turned on. Otherwise, like so, otherwise it will not turn on. So what we can do is we can have the output from the... Uh, each answer can come into one of these, and then over here we can have a power switch, like this. And, uh, oh, I forgot. It's kind of funky when you're one away. So if the power switch is off, we have no answer. But if the power switch is on, it permits the answer to come through. Now, right now the answer is on, so the output's on. But if the answer is zero, it'll output zero. So this is the, the principle behind what we're using. Now, I've stressed using vertical designs in this entire sequence. And you'll see that everything that I've done is along this pattern of parallel lines. You see that these lines are always non-overlapping, our inputs and outputs and that the, uh, all the gates that I've used have been vertical, for the most part. These full adders are three wide, and I only did that because on the decoder, these lines have three in between, so it works out quite nicely. However, the XNOR gates were one wide, and the RSNOR latches were one wide, and if I use any other memory cells, they, they too will be one wide, because you can put them together so closely and compactly. It's nice. Now, for this, we do end up having a long array, but it's compact uh, width-wise. So this is a vertical AND gate, much uh, to your expectation, I'm sure. I've already put in uh, seven of these for the first display, but we're going to wire up the others. The AND gate works like this. We have an input A and an input B, and our output C right here is only true if both of these are on. And the way this works is uh, it's from a principle called De Morgan's Law, which basically says if you... Uh, if you have two inputs and you're anding them together, that's the same as if you 
take two inverted inputs and do the NOR together, which sounds kind of complicated, but it's just an easy way of making an AND gate here. So don't worry about too much how this is done. Just know that you have to feed the input into the top one and the bottom one. So it, your input kind of has to go into the block like this, and the same is true for the top guy. So really, your top one, you're going to have a wire uh, right here. So to make this, I just got it from the wiki. I'll stand on a thing so you can see all of it if you want to pause right here. There's no wire here, there's no wire here, but there's a wire on top of this one and your output, okay? And uh, keep in mind the output has to be uh, on the same level as this torch. If you put it down here like this, this torch will light it up. So that being said, uh, let's take a look at where we put this. I like to put this as close to this guy as I can so that we save space. So what I've done is I've made the, the top of the A block right there directly underneath our first row of torches in the decoder. You can see it right here. That's the, that's the A input, that's the B input, and here is the C output. So I'll label those for you real quick. This is A, B, and C, where C is equal to, oh geez, I fell. Okay, that's not what C is equal to, <laughs> sorry. C is equal to A and B, meaning C is only true if we have an output and if we have the power switch enabled. So I'm gonna run one power line through all of these down the row, which is another advantage of doing it vertically. We can just repeat this pattern over and over, and then at the very end, we can quite simply put a uh, repeater. Oh, crap. There's water there. That stinks, I have to redo all that wiring. Okay, so whatever, let's just get to it. We'll go work on the opposite side so that we're not heavily distracted by what we've done over here. And I tried to make these uh, little rerouting wire things far enough away from this so that we can fit in these AND gates, and we should be able to. So now that I'm over here, I'm actually going to rebuild the AND gate quickly so that I have a reference one. I like to have a reference one to work with. So we have the input going in here, which is inverted and goes on to uh, this guy, which is also inverted. And up here, two blocks above this one. We have a torch, which goes onto this wire, which goes onto the output, like that. Okay, that's what we're going to be building. So let's replace these blocks with the with. We'll do green for these. Actually, no, we shouldn't use green for the end gates because we'll get them mixed up with the decoders. Let's use light blue. Okay, and then I'm just going to dig out all this down here because we don't really need it. And we can refigure out these wirings. If you haven't hooked up your seventh segment yet, you're in good shape because you're going to have to redo some of that stuff. I found that out today the hard way. Uh, so again, this is our, our top block. It corresponds to that one up there. So we can remember that, put a torch on it. And we're going to dig down three or four. I'm not really sure yet. So our next one is going to be this block that I just dug out right here. That's the second input. Remember, it doesn't have redstone on top of it. Uh, but the block that we put here does, like so. And then this is going to flow into our output right about here. OK, so that's, that's our output. Our, uh, and our power signal is going to go right here into this block, like so. And then our decoder output, of course, goes into that top block. And they're ended together. So right now, the. Uh, Oh yeah, we have to put a torch up there. Or, okay, so right now, um, the top A is on, A is on, but B is off. So it follows that C is off. So let's power our uh, our B input and see if C turns on. And it does, so our AND gate is working properly. So what we can do is you can either, uh, oh yes, so we have to get this up to our seven segment. So I'm just going to use a staircase pattern like this. Okay, and then I'm going to verify that the redstone reaches because it, it may have changed from how it was before. Oh yeah, so to do that, I'm going to place a torch here next to it to give a constant power. And then walk out and find where it ends. It looks like it ends right here. So I can replace my old repeaters. And then we'll just trace this line all the way to the end, and it reaches, so we're good. 
You're going to have to do that for all of your lines if you uh, have already built them. So maybe should have showed this earlier on, but it only just occurred to me that I wanted this feature in my display. So anyways, let's give it a test. Right now, um, let's see, this far one is the letter D, I think. And I'm going to fly real quick. Oops. If you look, our bottom segment, letter D, is not turned on because the power isn't being applied. So if we go down and power it, or really, let's, here, let's do this. Let's bring a power signal to the surface so that we can uh, change it and observe the change at the same time, or close to the same time. All right. Like so. Okay, so let's watch. Oh, can we really see that? Yeah, we kind of can. We'll just have to be quick. Bam, it turns on. So our power switch is working. Now you just repeat this for all the other, depending on uh, how many other displays you have. It really depends how many you made. But the basic pattern is you just uh, dig this out and bring it into the next block, same as we did. And you're going to run into some issues with repeaters and stuff, so you'll have to get creative with how you... Uh, really with how you, you power all these without the signal running out. But what I did is, down here, I put a repeater, and then I have the staircase end right before it. Oops, not not with the repeater, with the red sand block. And that'll actually power all seven of them. So that's really all I wanted to show you today. Uh, we're going to get a little more complicated next when we start doing our control panel. But this is a great feature to have on your control panel, the power button, because I think it looks tacky to have it sitting at all zeros all the time because right now we're not really trying to have an answer and yet the calculator insists on giving us one. So we're going to add in some functionality. I mean, have you ever seen a calculator that didn't have a power button? That's, that's my thinking here. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, definitely rate the video, you know, give it a thumbs up if you liked it or tell me what you didn't like. If you decide to give it a thumbs down, I'd really appreciate you telling me why. And uh, yeah, so leave your comments, positive or negative. And if you haven't subscribed to me yet, I don't know what the hell is wrong with you, so get on that. So, <laughs> good luck and happy building.